In the previous presentation, we completed emitter bias configuration and in this lecture, we will solve one problem based on emitter bias configuration. In this problem, we need to calculate all the three resistances which are there in the emitter bias circuit. They are resistance RB, resistance RC and resistance RE. The next thing is the voltage VCE. We have to calculate the output voltage VCE and we also have to calculate the potential at point B. In this circuit, the base current is not given to us but collector current is given. It is equal to 3 milliamps. The collector current IC is equal to 3 milliamps. Beta is equal to 80. The current amplification factor is equal to 80. We are using NPN transistor and this terminal is the base terminal, this terminal is the collector terminal and this terminal is the emitter terminal. Potential at the collector terminal is equal to 7.6 volts. So VC is equal to 7.6 volts and potential at emitter terminal is equal to 2.4 volts. So VE is equal to 2.4 volts. Potential at base terminal is not given and we have to calculate the potential at base terminal. VCC, the biasing potential is equal to 12 volts and I will start, I will start the solution with E part. I will first find out the potential at point V or potential at the base terminal. We already know VBE is equal to 0 0.7 volts because VBE is the forward bias diode and we have 0 0.7 volts in case of silicon diode so we can say that VB minus VE is equal to 0 0.7 volts we already know value of VE it is equal to 2.4 volts so VB is simply equal to 2.4 volts plus 0 0.7 volts so finally VB is equal to 3.1 volts this is the answer of the E part now we will solve we will solve the D part in D part we have to calculate the output voltage VCE we already know we already know value of VC it is equal to 7.6 volts and value of VE it is equal to 2.4 volts so we can calculate VCE it is equal to VC minus VE so we have 7.6 volts minus 2.4 volts. When you solve this, you will have 5.2 volts as the value of output voltage. This is the answer of the D part. We have completed E part and D part of the problem. In the C part, we have to calculate resistance RB, the resistance in series with the base terminal. And for this, we will apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in the input loop so let's solve the C part of the problem VCC is equal to 12 volts so we have plus 12 volts minus IBRB minus IBRB equal to VB VB is equal to 3.1 volts and we can easily calculate the value of resistance RB but for this we also need the current IB and IB is equal to IC divided by beta. IC is given in the problem. It is equal to 3 milliamps. 3 milliamps divided by beta is equal to 80. When you solve this, you will have value of base current IB equal to 37.5 microamps. Now we can calculate the resistance RB. RB is equal to 12 volts minus 3.1 volts divided by 37.5 microamps so the resistance rb is equal to 237.4 kilo ohms this is the value of resistance rb and this is the answer this is the answer of the c part now we will calculate we will calculate resistance re the emitter resistance and for this I will apply KVL in this loop I will start from 2.4 volts and end to the ground potential of ground is equal to 0 volts so we have 2.4 volts minus 
आई ई डीमीटर करेंट मल्टीप्लाइड विथ आर ई equal to zero volts now the emitter current ie is nearly equal to the collector current so we can replace ie with the collector current ic so resistance re is equal to 2.4 volts divided by 3 milliamps so finally we have 0.8 kilo ohms as the value of resistance re the last part of the problem is the calculation of resistance rc and for this we will again apply the kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop i will start from vcc and end at 7.6 volts so we have 12 volts value of vcc minus collector current multiplied with resistance rc equal to 7.6 volts so rc is equal to 12 volts minus 7.6 volts divided by 3 milliamps and finally we have rc equal to 1.47 kilo ohms so this is how you have to calculate all the three resistances the output voltage and the potential at base terminal in this problem i have used the kvl in which potential at points are involved you can see 12 volt is not the potential difference and 7.6 volt is also not the potential difference and in kvl in kirchhoff's voltage law we only include the potential differences but if you want to include potential at points in kvl then start from one potential at point let's say this is p1 start from p1 like we have done here and end your calculation at the last point let's say the last point is p2 and end your calculation at the last point and in this way we can use point potentials in kvl because according to kvl the sum of voltages or potential differences in a closed loop is equal to 0 so if you want to make sum of voltages in this equation equal to 0 you have to subtract 7.6 volts on both the sides so we have minus 7.6 volts plus 12 volts minus icrc equal to 0 so we can say that we have now kvl in which only potential differences are involved because 7.6 volt is the potential at point p2 this is potential at point p2 and 12 volt is the potential at point p1 so we have p1 minus p2 and p1 minus p2 is potential difference potential difference is nothing but the difference between potentials of two points so we have p1 minus p2 which is potential difference ic rc is already the potential difference drop across resistance rc and sum of this two is equal to 0 so we can say that this equation is proper use of kirchhoff's voltage law and if you want to learn more about this topic you may watch series diode configuration lecture in that lecture i have explained how to deal with point potentials So this is all for this lecture see you in the next one